Hello there, everyone, and welcome to To You Know The Last Days Of Your, which you probably know by now, but I'm, of course, Mr. Mocha Lover. And right now, we I've actually done one extra focus off-screen just because we need to get some political power when we do corruption in Congress, but I've done and gone back and played a little bit so we get public gift registries. Nothing angers the American public more than knowing that the congressman-elect has ranged or reneged on their promises in pursuit of dirty bribes. So, what is there for a faultless man to hide? Surely, innate righteousness would compel such a man to set matters straight to the moment an avenue to prove his innocence lays open for him. For public officials, a tally of gifts and donations laid bare before the cons constituents is just that. An avenue to absolve the faultless from blame and sift out the corrupt from their hollowed ranks. Prison Goldwater believes the idea has merit and plans to implement forthwith. That it also impacts labor unions and their allies in Congress is pure coincidence. A happy coincidence, but coincidence regardless. But we're currently doing corruption in Congress. President Goldwater's ongoing campaign against the labor union's influence in Capitol Hill has let somewhat of a fire within the rank and file. Not a day passed without eagle-eyed staffers carefully scouring over documents and testimonies, ensuring that every I is dotted and every T crossed, and every check given to and received by every Congress creator within the Capitol counted for. Surprisingly, a good number of the Qs don't even have ties to labor unions at all. <clears throat> These recent developments indicate a slow, seemingly inevitable shift in scope, from a crusade against union lobbying to a crusade against congressional avarice itself. Unexpected indeed, but not unwelcome, believes the president. Certain options may have revealed themselves as a result, and it would not do to overlook them simply because they were unaccounted for at first. So, as you can see on screen, I've already completed the AFL-CIO, which is important because this will give us future union-busting decisions will be more effective. Make preparations for taking on the organization, because right now, we are at 99 out of 136 for our maximum potential progress um, number. So, we at this point, we have to kind of beeline through infiltrating these guys, but I, I'm going to attempt, and I'm pretty sure that you have to get through this one first, so you can get a boost to striking down unions. Um, so we're going to try our best here. I might do this later on, but like we have four pieces of evidence, we're going to need more. So really, severe. It's color coded here, but this is really the center, apparently. This, I, you know, I guess you you can kind of infer that, but like, the game doesn't tell you that. Hey. This is actually the cent uh, center version of the party, so we can target Northern Unions, um, focus on the Midwest, free the West, as well as the media offensive, which I don't know what really happens, so we can do that, and we won't lose evidence. Planning with the actor. How was your trip to D.C., Ronnie? The pot was steaming hot when Barry poured two freshly brewed mugs of coffee on the Resolute desk. He made for two packets of sugar and a tube of cream. A creamer. Pouring the contents into his, pure black became brown top with a foamy white under teaspoons gentle stirs. A sign of a perfect blend. The president enjoyed a sip as he sat down. Flight was much more peaceful than the ride to LAX, replied Ronald Reagan, opposite his side of the table. Hollywood's been up in arms since elections and I haven't had a day of peace in quite since. In one motion, he took a swig off the other mug. The actor had his taste and waited for nothing to get to it. That alone was worth Barry's respect, which wasn't hard to require for a man of Mr. Reagan's character. The Arizona already owed him much more than that when he supported the, his candidacy last convention with the finest speech he'd ever heard from a Californian. I can imagine, Barry said, and gulped after a, another helping of coffee before continuing. Your fellow actors tied their feet to the hawks? Reagan smiled knowingly. You can say that. Trust Hollywood would vote for anyone without a D next to their names. Yet another w one of the many gripes the president has with the city's teeming libs, or the liberals. At the very least, men like Ronnie were willing to help in their stead. In their stead. Mug empty, the president set it aside and grabbed a pen and piece of paper. Time to get back to the real reason for the actor's present. Miss so, Mr. Reagan. I'd like to know the details of the ad campaign you mentioned, mentioned in our last correspondence. So, which is good. That it doesn't require evidence, but now we're, we're going to try to do this as best we possibly can. I would love to confuse the unions. It'll be shadier, which means we'll have a higher risk every month, but moderately raise a maximum potential risk. We've not done this one yet. Or at least I haven't selected it yet, but we will do this once we get close here, because we only have so much political power, which sucks. But we do need some PP for this as well, and we gotta continue infiltrating, which sucks, but we we just need more. However, at the same time, once we can lower this to be like significant instead of severe or something like that, that'll be good. Um, let's focus on I'm not really sure the Northern Unions, maybe, maybe. Hopefully that doesn't go too badly for us, but it. And we already lost two pieces of evidence, so I do want to see. So, right now, I forget exactly how much risk we get every month. I think, I want to say it's 7, because 6 plus this is 7, maybe. So, we'll see what happens. Um, I, would, I, I just want to see what happens first. I mean, there's nothing else we can really do about it. So, and I do not want to take this one until 
uh, we have a very weakened AFL-CIO because we'll begin a full-scale set assault against the unions. The strength of the AFL will determine how successful this is. Now we can do tight new union re requirements. We can have equal scrutiny and exonerate the RDs. Deal with the problem at hand. We lose a lot of political power. Or this should dig them deep down. It goes further divided as, as well. The NPP is well to blame. Okay, conservatives are honorable. Requires one of the following. Um... Popularity in our north will greatly increase. It's going down. The voters reflect on recent events. We can only hope that they'll appreciate us staying true to our principles. Uh, it's going down. This seems really bad for us. So, blame the Republicans. Nationwide corruption becomes less popular. This is, this seems a little bit too honest. So, um, hmm. Equal scrutiny. We go further divided besides exonerate. So, did you do this one? Okay, so you can only do either one of these two. Conservatives are honorable versus it's going down. Honestly, it seems like <coughs> whenever we do another Goldwater campaign and we'll do Reaganomics, we'll go with suppressing the socialists. It seems like this would be the better route to do just to get that route. So I think for this one, because we're conservative and quite conservative for this for this route, I want to do this one. They should not. Well, they won't be happy, but that's okay because this one we only need one of the following. Actually, can we still do this? One? No, because we need this one. We need both of these to go here. And then to go this one, and to go that one. So, <sighs> exonerate the RDs. The RD party grows a little more unified. Which, we don't really really need, but it's going down. So, yeah, we'll get rid of corruption next time. We'll probably do one of these for the last things next time we do Goldwater. So, if you want to read about this, please go ahead, as well as this one. Because I'm not going to remember this one at all later on, so. And this one, too. Nationwide corruption. <clears throat> Blame the Republicans. As well as it's going down. <coughs> so, we're going to go ahead and do exonerate the RDs soon. But we're going to do this one again. So if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Nice. Make the right choice. The ad begins with a panorama shot of Sam Fran in the morning. The sun hovering above the horizon to paint the skyline a warm yellow and a shimmer. Silver glints against the bay's deep blue. <coughs> The camera then cuts to empty offices, factories, and workstations then, to families waking up, having breakfast, and getting dressed for the day. Cue a trickle of workers slotting their punch cards by the factory entrance, school children entering the bus in front of their house, accompanied by an uplifting orchestral piece, Ronald Reagan narrates that America's beginning to wake up and return to normal, an allusion to the chaos that engulfed the country years prior. Juxtaposing the hopeful imagery on the, are the grim leftovers of this chaos. Abandoned picket signs and bandanas in the streets, shops with broken windows swept aside by the shopkeepers, walls plastered from corner to corner with posters in their faded reds, yellows, and blacks. A group of teenagers have their ha hands uncuffed before a police cruiser takes them home. Outside an emergency room, an EMT weeps as doctors carry a body back to the mortuary. The soothing bass voice over continues that some people wish America to stay in its long nightmare instead of moving on. <coughs> The ad ends with a pair of soldiers hoisting Old Glory to the top of a flagpole, fluttering against the bright morning sun, the blue morning sky, and the gentle morning breeze. As a shot fades to black, Reagan concludes, America's waking up from a very bad dream. Let's make the right choice and get back to normal. So it's still severe. I'm not sure what else that's supposed to do. The, the influence of the AFL is extensive. If discovered to be severe. Okay, so now they're extensive, which is better than it was earlier. Charting the course. In preparation for the war on the trade unions, President Goldwater has assembled a cabinet to go through with the strategies they had planned weeks prior. For such a vast, multifaceted campaign with many avenues of failure, diverging opinions on which strategy to undertake was perhaps more of an inevitability than he thought. At least there was consensus on who to deal with first. The onerous honor belonged to the senators, sympathetic to the trade unionist cause, where American compromise stumble was in the senators' party affiliations. In this issue, in this issue his allies are split into two roughly equal, even camps. The first he calls a partisan so named for their visceral hate, hatred for the Cretans and the MPP. One can even say their willingness to toss opposition into the howling wilderness supersedes their commitment to ending corruption in politics, adamant as they are ensuring that the campaign focuses only on the leftists and progresses among the MPP's ranks. Nevertheless, they do raise some good points. Chief among them is the fact that, should their strategy be undertaken fully, the MPP will leave this mess of shattered pot, party, pot money, can no longer repair. Shattered pot money can no longer repair. The other side of the conversation is idealists, noble men who rallied against or rally around the president's clarion call against the socialist menace and all and of their own volition. They suggest that the sword of justice fall equal into both parties. Else the people would see the campaign only as an act of hypocrisy. Notable in the rhetoric are suggestions that the Republicans share their adversaries' fate, after all. Have the senators of New England and the Midwest not received their share of red tainted spoils as well? Whatever President Goldwater chooses will decide the course of his campaign hence. All wise men know to consider the repercussions of their actions. Whether the Arizona will exercise its wisdom where it is needed, it most remains to be seen. For the good of a country, the MPP must go. Justice wears a blindfold for a good reason. Well, the MPP has got to go. 
as much as I want to do equal scrutiny, like I said, I mean, we're fighting, next time we're going to fight, like, corruption, like, extreme, like, so we'll go left, we'll go Reaganomics, we'll go this side as well, if we have enough support, which we hopefully probably will, and then we'll do this, one. this should dig them deep down, I, mean, I guess we can go that way still, but, we could, I guess you could go this way, but we get evidence with this one, which is nice, stability, should the public find out about this, they would not be happy, you know, it is what it is, MPP is to blame, honestly, the popularity of the MPP is not really that high anyway, so, it doesn't even matter to me too much. So, and actually, how strong is the MPP together? Actually, you know what? It's extensive. Target the Northern Unions. Oh, wait. Wait, didn't we already do that? Oh, oh that's, that's, that's really bad. Ooh. Uh, face the West. Free the West. Let's do that one, too. Um, riding the Party. We can't do that one. Uh, the political landscape. They are working together well. So, even if we try to divide them, it wouldn't do very much. So, Operation Success. Good job, guys. Good job. So, out of 99, it's currently 99, and then it's going to jump up probably a little bit higher soon. Um, yeah. Also, are we trying to get a protection agency? Um, we're currently at 7. Do we have any extra money here? No, we don't. That sucks. Yeah, that kind of sucks. But we do have quite a few comments to go through. So, and we'll talk about it in just a little bit. Extensive, 99. I'm just worried about it. Okay, so it's April 30th. Now, 99 jumps up to... Please don't be that high. Please don't be that high. Okay, that's what I thought it would be, 7. That's not terrible, actually. If we can uh, do this as well, we might still do okay here without having these cons commands, because, like, I'll be honest, for these campaigns, especially in TNO, because they're just so long and hard to get to sometimes, I, I, I don't mind using cons commands. I, I really don't, but exonerate these guys from blacklist to whitelists. In dealing with America's or American society's more seditious elements, the federal government's extensive security and intelligence apparatuses have taken to keep an equally extensive register of persons who have been or have been or are suspected of having engaged themselves in illegal or traitorous activities. The thinking goes that such elements should be isolated away from where they can do the most harm. Spies and smugglers make up a healthy portion of these registers, although criminals and rabble-rousers form the majority. The converse of this blacklist is a register of individuals who have demonstrated deep loyalty to America and its laws. And investigating loyal citizens is a fruitless, wasteful endeavor. Thus, President Goldwater believes his anti-corruption campaign is best served with a whitelist for the most exceptional members of the party. And the Labor Union Standards Act. I think I read this one last time, so... Uh... I'm pretty sure I read this one last time, so one more blow against unionism. So if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Cool. And we have all the Democrats we want, so none of the center care. The far right's pretty okay with this, so that's 73 senators, so. I love it. I mean, seriously, what's not to love about that? And since we did that too. Oh, we only get 5% more consumer goods we can build in. That sucks. We can't really build anywhere else. That really sucks. No, oh, that really, that really butters my bread, as some might say. Alright, so now we're still at 106. Um, we're not going to end the program. We're going to go all the way if we possibly can. We can spend some PP now. 154 is good. Goldie's g gobbledygook. Willow made you sleep on the couch again. James slowly turned towards Foreman Rosie, taking care not to pull the sore muscle on his neck and upper back. The ice pack did little to stem the pain while he drove to the weekly union meet. You know how she is, he sighed. His diminutive co-worker crossed her arms frowning. Doesn't make it any less dumb. It's just once every week she can handle herself without you for a few hours, right? She saw one of the ads last night and, and she fell for him hook, line, and sinker. The blonde mudo blonde mulled over the words phrase not as a question but as a statement of fact. Will and his old friend had their disagreements which inevitably inevitably blew into how or blew, bled into how James should spend his time. He learned to choose his words carefully when the topic is broached. In this case, the only sensible decision was to say nothing at all, which is what I do at work all the time. Seriously, Rosie grumbled, what's good these degrees of hers if she can't fa tell facts from the horse dung in the Gramps farm? Clear as day, Goldie's ads all, all, she hummed and thought, pinching at an imaginary beard, all gobbledygook, James offered. Anybody else, and they'd given him a questioning stare for a word supposedly only children would say, but his friend had a welcoming sense of humor. He thought happily, if the titters that left her lips said anything. Seconds later, they evolved into a stomach-aching chortles that echoed throughout the waiting lobby and caught the attention of the handful early arrivals mulling about. Rosie's daughter drew in their nods and smirks. Not for her, for some reason, but at James instead. He returned each with a level stare before leaning to his side. The womanly belled chimes lifting his spirits up smothered their suspicious look somewhat. If nothing else, they made for pleasant uh, ambience while the lobby waited for a boss Atwood and the rest. I'm not your cushion, Jim. Rosie giggled as he eased into his weight. As uh, she eased into his weight. Ooh. Uh, so we're going to lose some support here. The union members rally behind the N NPCC, but you know, they really rally behind them because there's one, two, three, four, five L's in rally. Wow. Cool. 
Cross checks senators' union affiliations. It seems as if one in this day and age would be hard pressed to find a bureaucrat or politician who doesn't shudder or break a sweat, even imperceptibly, whenever the term conflict of interest is uttered within earshot. Man is easy to tempt away from their duties with money as it is. With the stakes involved in the formulation and implementation of laws, money tends to be appear to beltway officials and employees like o Oses of Mana and the dry desert or oases of Mana. Incidentally, America's trade unions happen to be among the largest sources of this sweet, sticky fluid, tempting senators with an ear for the common man with bribes for the common good. Thus, the Goldwater administration now sets its sights on senators and their past and present affiliations. They can take care of snooping around for conflicts of interest with the trade unions, and in sense, public will do the bludgeoning for the president. Honestly, technology doesn't really matter too much right now. Actually, did we get that one done? Oh, please tell me we got it done. Please tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me. Oh, look at that. America needs to build. We need more public works here. <coughs> Build, for the love of God, build, build, build. Americans need to work. They need to make money. Oh, that's so nice. And we don't want to forget about Hawaii. Or Alaska. Nice. Good stuff. Do you anything up here we can invest in? No. And how about down here? Let time go on first. Yes, Puerto Rico. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, boy. Let's fill this vacancy. So we're going to need um, a Supreme Court majority. I'm more than certain. So that'll be good. 113. Ooh, that's dangerous. Ooh, that's a dangerous game we're playing. And we'll only get 1.66 every single day, which really sucks. Uh, political landscape. Um, so right now, seven conservatives and two libs. So if we go liberal, that might give us some more political power to work with. So we, we definitely need to choose that one. So and I'm sure the bill's going to pass anyway. So They're still extensive, which sucks. Wait. We did three of these already, right? Or two of these. We did two of these already, so it should be less than extensive, right? Mm. Exonerate the RDs. The Republican Democratic Party is the last bastion of normalcy that reigned before the Great Depression as two halves, the architect of America's recovery in the lead up to the Second World War. It's a great compromise American politics has witnessed for two foes locking horns since before the Civil War to dispense of their enmities and join hands says more than enough of their earnest belief in the country's long-term future. A compliment which hardly applies to the Frankenstein of an opposition that seeks to counter their every move in Congress. Values shine brightest in times of adversity and through their part partnership. The Republican Democrats have demonstrated values with worth fostering in the country's otherwise decrepit and lackadaisical politics. President Goldwater sees no need to disturb this relationship by banning empty accusations over their income. If you want to buy that, let's go ahead. We're going to go with the liberal option. I know, it's weird, but we got to get more support. <gasps> we have two pieces of evidence. Yay! And we need more political power. Yes, yes. Exonerate the RDs. Should the public find out they are not going to be happy? We're a little more unified. That's always going to be the unified, right? That was good. So, we can increase funding, target the unions. I forget which one we did. It's still extensive, which is... Why? We can do that as well, which we probably will. Free the West, focus on the Midwest. I forget which one we did already. Um, I'll be honest, I forgot. Crap, that's not good. Um, do that one. Free the West. This ain't good, man. Exonerate him. Tune in general report. Light aircraft, thank you. <coughs> Uh, there you go. Do that one. Exonerate him. What about the Republican Union members? With such a charged, pol a polarized political situation, the American public is keen on pointing fingers at every last bit of corruption, both real and perceived. These witch hunts in all but name have supported the president's righteous crusade since its inception, but there have been times where their zeal becomes something of an obstacle for his plans. Take, for example, the Republicans affiliated with trade unions and trade unions themselves. While questionable in their preferences, the organizations they endorse are proven clean and above board by the intelligence community regardless. The American people have been quick to accuse these congressmen of the same corruption that typifies the NPP. For the good of party and sensibility, the White House shall disabuse the public of their dis preconceptions before they commit to worse actions. That's dangerous, man. Infiltrate. We need more evidence. Labor Union Standard Act passed. Uh, let's see. I can't remember if I read this one, so... Surrounded by well-wishers, allies, and press coverage, President Goldwater today announced and signed the Labor Union Standards Act into law. The bill itself handily passes in the Senate and House by considerable margins, despite protestations from the, Na the MPP and a number of Republican congressmen who broke ranks to vote against its passage, futilely, as later events have proved. This is an appreciable uh, victory over the trade unions who wish to put their own fortunes over America, as the President said cheerfully to the media afterwards. But we must not make mistake it as a cause to invite complacency. Make no mistake, my administration will never cease in following through with its promises to the success 
successful conclusion. The American labor movement is in an uproar following the bill's ratification in a joint statement with notable activists, progressive officials, and renowned labor organizations. AFL-CIO President George Meany rebuked President Goldwater for failing to uphold the political liberties of American workers, and that the union will do whatever it can to prevent the American workers' rights from further attack. Isolated riots have become since reported in Baltimore, Sacramento, and Cheyenne. One more blow against unionism. Thank God. It's low! Oh, that's actually really good. That's really good. Now, if it's low, we should feel confident enough we're going to go beeline through this as fast as possible. We'll do boom, 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 and then do the Attorney General reports. Because we're going to lose even more political power, which is bad. And go with what we have. We are playing a dangerous game here. The next time we'll go with extreme anti-union stuff. Exonerate the RDs. Oh, that GDP. Man, I can't wait to play as Bennett. Someday, if... Oh, this is really bad. Um, if ever we get the toolbox here to come out. If ever, man. If ever. So, it's 144. What was it earlier? If discovered, the consequences will be catastrophic. Honestly, I'll use political power. I'll use cheats if I have to. At this point, I don't care. I don't. I really do not care. 144. I shouldn't jump up to 13, right? <coughs> Someone registered gifts shouldn't bring it crashing down. Moral con quandaries and dilemmas were typical of any government, any nation in written history, and rightfully so, after all. Decisions which change the lives of millions never come without benefits and drawbacks, and not treating them with the gravity to reserve for dilemmas enables decisions that can easily undo centuries of sound governance in a fraction of the time. These dilemmas are uncomfortable to face, albeit a necessary discomfort for the good policymaking. At present, President Goldwater faces one such dilemma for the form of some unregistered gifts. Uh, just uncovered by some curious government auditors. What if, what if they belong to the Hawks? Alas, their receipts bore the names of elephants and donkeys instead. Perhaps hard times call for hard decisions. If you want to be out better for armed professionals, and please go ahead. We have Spartan discipline here and the good old U.S. of A. Three quarters of a trillion dollars in GDP. God, I love Goldwater. Low. Oh, oh, that's so bad. So we went up by nine. Jesus Christ. Um, I don't want to go up any higher yet. Ooh, but it's 105. Ooh. Ooh, this goes up by 10. What does it mean by moderate? This one says, this is a raise amount. If we do this one, which is slightly more expensive. Uh, so it goes up by 9. 157 is... Alright, you know what? I'm going to save here. Screw it. I'm just going to save. Just because this... These campaigns for TNO, especially as in America, like I said earlier, they just take so long to do it. And they're a little nerve-wracking. So... 157 jumps up to what? 150. Well, that's not worth doing then. Hold on, hold on. You know what? I'm going to show you the loading screen just because it's actually a very nice loading screen. I mean, just look at it. Look at the 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 the. Well, yeah, this one's okay. Yeah, I like it. And the Subhas Chandra Bose. One individual may die for an idea, but that idea will, after his death, incarnate itself in a thousand lives. Good or bad. So, yeah, I love the Gibraltar Dam. Look at that. And a nice helicopter, too. <coughs> cool. My bad about that, guys. Um, but, yeah, like, that's not worth doing, then. Political landscape, we already know. And, actually, do we get the political power from the Death Supreme Court? Yes, we did. Darn it. I want more. All right, so we, if we have enough political power at the end, we will do more environmental protection stuff. What? That's just crap, man. That's better. That's not worth doing. So, we'll get some more uh, political power here, which will be good. And the conservatives are, of course, honorable. As the dust and rubble settles, this whole debacle has proven yet again a town minor truth in America's political scenery. Conservatism upholds their principles better than their adversaries. Never throughout the whole campaign have they once been revealed to have stoops as low as their liberals and progressives of achieving their political ambitions, whereas the MPP were beaten bloody over the illicit affairs with trade unions. The Democrats, and to a slightly less extent, the Republicans, shown like diamonds set of gold, unblemished, and untarred. Whatever the repercussions may arise from the campaign, American conservatism has surely won it from a triumph worth celebrating for a good long time. Three hurrahs for common sense and tradition. Oh, infiltration failure. Would you look at that? Oh, wait, wait. I can't do that. Oh. Oh, okay. Do we hit the... Do we go... Oh. Look at all this. Who? We don't know. We, my boys are still... You had one job. Whoever plant the thousand, don't get caught. And you blew it. I don't care how or why or when, but the FBI failed to keep someone's mouth shut, and now they're all paying the price. Do you know what the Cronkites are already calling this? Uh, the second Watergate. Like, I'm effing Nixon, come again. Everyone will have a field day with us, I bet. Sir, it's not too late to salvage popular opinion. I'm not asking you for your advice, Hoover. I'm asking you for some gosh darn answers. If you don't have any, then get out and find them before coming back. I'll leave salvaging the tatters of my campaign to competent men, as you wish, Mr. President. All that work just gone in one leak? What a mess. <coughs> Infiltration failure. 
As the investigative arm of the federal government, it is the Federal Bureau of Investigation's responsibility to look into all possible threats which imperil America from within. Be it foreign espionage or organized crime, the FBI leverages a large network of informants and agents spread across all 50 states to paralyze their activities and bring their masterminds to justice. The crucial nature of its mission also compelled Congress to bestow the agency with powers which are somewhat questionable in the constitutionality, if not explicitly. Then, through implicit assent, some rights have to be waived, if its opponents, proponents argue, if in order to fashion a weapon to banish greater evils. Evils that continue greater than wiretapping and enhanced interrogation. Um, I think I've already read this one before. Um. Uh, well, whatever. Having acquired said assent from the White House, the FBI now turns its all-seeing eye towards American trade unions, searching for the skeletons they've surely kept away from their valorous image. Everyone has their skeletons, after all, least of all large organizations with money and pull to draw America's hard workers by the millions. But the action was of little surprise for President Goldwater's close counsel. His legendary antipathy for bloated rackets led by the most corrupt of men was well known within the Beltway and beyond. Director Hoover assuaged concerns of a slip-up escalating into a scandal rivaling the Nixon debacle, saying that his men are, to quote verbatim, competent enough not to get caught by some Reds and ran cops. His agents will get away with the dirt without leaving a fingerprint. Despite the director's confidence in his agency's competence, circumstances seem to disagree. Weeks spent observing one union's head HQ in New York, sending agents under the cover of night and disguised by day, amounted to spreadsheets and memoranda cleaner than fine china. Similar attempts in other cities resulted likewise. Frustration clear on his face, Hoover reported the following cabinet meeting that he had withdrawn the FBI's field assets for the time being to evade suspicion and reassess the suspect organizations. We'll try again next time. Well, I guess we hit the thing, so... Um... That's so stupid. I honestly like I understand it, but I don't like this. I really don't. Um hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's just too I get that. Oh, now they're disunited, which is really bad. It's catastrophic. But it I don't know. It's just that's why I don't like I didn't want to do this campaign as my first campaign, which is fine cuz it's not this is definitely not my first campaign as America, but like it's just it's it's, it's RNG. I don't like this whole RNG, and it makes sense why it is, but I don't know. I wish this could get refixed, so I'm going to try a couple things off screen real quick. All right, everyone, so right now, it's November 24th, 1974, and honestly, uh, we're going to have to use console commands because we just don't have enough political power uh, right now. So instead of trying to get or infiltrate the AFL associates again, I decided not to. We still have two pieces of evidence, which it is what it is. I guess I didn't need to get those two, two extra pieces of evidence. Just because, well, we don't have enough political power to do anything else here, which each one costs 30, so we had 60 extra political power, which we could have used to help increase FBI funding. But at this point, because our risk progress is so close, we just have to use cons commands to spam this. But I guess it is what it is. Um, I don't like that. You just don't know. How, you don't know how much political power you're really going to need to have a successful run as each president. So. I really don't like that. I mean, it's always a good idea to, you know, make sure that you have enough, but I don't know. It is what it is, and I've spent so much time off screen and, you know, on screen just trying to do these campaigns, and I'm not going to end this campaign unsuccessfully, even if we have to use cons command. So it's unfortunate. I'm going to give us, I just type in PP for 1,000 political power, or I guess 999. If you would like to read about the Attorney General's report, please go right ahead, which is going to kill us for political power and stability. Or at least political power, not stability so much, but it is what it is. And yeah, I don't know. It just. I wish we could do. I wish we could do this more efficiently. I don't want to have to use cons commands for this, but go with what we have. Because in the next campaign, whenever I do Barry Goldwater again, like I said before, we're going to go extremely anti union. But nearly two centuries have passed since the founders have uttered their inalienable truths, and now truth is rarer than it has ever been before. Duplicity and corruption stain all discourse and business with murky black ink, a putrid, oily, and slimy backdrop against what in better times would have been picturesque communities, filled with the pleasantries of brotherly love, but it is in such despair where print bricks of earnest truth shine brightest, giving hearts the strength to lift their burdens one day more. President Goldwater's greatest weapon against the AFL CIO is just that earnest, naked truth. Use faith it will carry him through better than Director Hoover's increasingly harebrained schemes, at least. And we'll have a fair war on unionism, but, you know, I, I hate using cons commands. I, spe I really hate doing using cons commands. Like, just, I like to be um, as clean as possible. Also, if you want to read about these focuses, please go ahead. I'll read them eventually someday, but, oh well. But, a limited case. So many ways the case can go, and if President Goldwater were being honest, not a lot of them had the victory he wanted to happen. On the contrary, most he thought of 
had him eating crow as the Supreme Court shoots the case down in front of national TV and 200 million pairs of eyes. This paled, of course, to the worst case scenario. Hoover's boys get caught where they shouldn't, kicking off yet another political meltdown so soon after the Nixon scandal. So in his wisdom, he decided to stick with the arguments he's absolutely certain will make a compelling case. All white-collar crimes and old boys' networks only sparking interest because of the fresh coat of red paint. Much less glamorous than smoking guns, but league safer and ironclad regardless. Which is good. Also, this point, uh, technology does not matter. It's already 74, it's almost 75. Uh, I'll come over here, and we're already doing all of this stuff, which is great. Um, here, 1980 stuff. It's only 884 days ahead of time. No questions asked. Good for us. Good with us. Good for us. Cool. And military construction. We're just going to go up to this one as well. Flamethrowers level 4. Nice. Fear, war, and unionism. Full-scale war portends an image of total devastation and destruction, like the Grim Reaper opening his bloody harvest in wide, arcing swaths. It makes explicit mobilizing the nation's people and its industries for the great cause that is their patrimony's continued existence. For the general, it entails coffee-fueled days and sleepless nights, hunched over troop movements, tables, weather reports put together, a grand battle plan to win the war, whatever the cost. America is not a war for survival. Neither is she in a scenario where its mighty factories and its 200 million citizens would be harnessed to their maximum extent. He isn't even an officer of the armed forces, supportive he may be of their vigilant duties, nevertheless. He believes full-scale war is an apt description for what he will wage against the country's largest trade union. Their stumble, not fall, they're too big to fall as it is, will cause ripples across the country. Not as severely as war, but the ensuing riots will make, surely make battlefields of every city. Half of America will harness their support towards this crusade, the other half will make impediments of themselves for every step it will take. This noble task will consume its faculties in the months ahead, same as any general faced with planning operations in wartime. Then again, rules are followed even in wartime. He has disregarded the situations or suggestions of a more zealous allies. Regardless of the affiliation, the Constitution must be adhered to. He won't be able to face himself in the mirror if he became who he had sworn to fight. This may be war, but let this war be fought fairly. I hate using cons commands, man. It just... That's crap. Since we're here anyways, just expand the reach of the EPA. Why not? You might as well at this point. And if we focus on these guys, I, 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 it's, I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't want to deal with any fallout after I've had to use consequence for that. But the Constitution demands it. In his eyes, President Goldwater saw himself as nothing less than a devoted adherent to America's Constitution, and why shouldn't he be? The document is a bedrock atop which a const the nation is built upon upon, the basis of its core essence and distinctive character. The crystallization of the Founders' hopes and dreams, the fruit of their effort, their last gift to the children, that they may live and die free, to deviate from it, is nothing less than heresy against America itself. Just don't question about uh, exonerating the RDs. With the rise of socialism, more have strayed away from America and into heresy. Any good American would be incensed at their gall, but only the greatest few would rise above it, or rise above as the Constitution calls loud for aid. Let our government's people be assured. They have placed their trust in one such great few last election day, and he shall not shirk from it. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. It's just... Well, this does help me prepare for the next Goldwater run whenever I get to it, if it doesn't get too radically fixed or transformed. Why does this keep going down? This is why we have to use political power. But yeah, like, the next time I do this, like, any PP we have has got to be for Goldwater at the end. But, the AF USA versus AFL-CIO. Tomorrow will arrive, the prophecy day of reckoning. A million man hours spent painstakingly constructing the case against trade unionism, both legally and illegally, now begins to make their weight known in the court of law. How many nights has Barry Goldwater spent poring over case files, appraising Hoover and his goons, practicing his sermon-like speeches, decrying the unions lording over American workers for the supposed benefit? Coffee was the blood of God himself, however, even holy water has limits, and Barry felt he has surpassed every known limit it's ever had since he began his crusade. He sighed, sinking deep into the Oval Office's velvet chair, God will protect his own tomorrow morning. Look at that. It just keeps going up higher and higher and higher. I don't know. Ha Let me know in the comments below. Have you had a successful Berry Water run or something similar to what we're doing right now? Because it, it seems it a bit too extreme for the amount of political power you need. Did I even go extreme for Berry Water? Like, we're going, I would say, a moderate path. Because we're not going, it's not enough. We're not going down this right as well. Like, and yeah, you get political power down here too. But still, like, have you actually been able to do this side successfully? I'm sure some of you guys probably have, because you knew about how much political power you would need. Well, this is just extreme. 201. 
Let's see what one's going to go. And he, how low is that going to go? But after this one, we still have to go back over here and do the best defense as a well-funded military. A full congressionally mandated budget increase for defense has been called for. And with the raging pitted or pitched infernal covering South Africa, it's inevitably necessary. If the riot cannot be halted in Africa, Lord knows what they may be bold enough to attempt next. Anything on the spectrum from strikes using weapons of mass destruction to another global conquest, the likes of which has not been seen for years. Safety can always be bought in more guns and war supplies, so why not secure oneself in the event of Reich getting more audacious or threatening they already are? The war's continued frustrations are proof positive that it's a warrant concern, and that decisive victory requires decisive commitment with considerable sums of pure cash. <clears throat> 201 has dropped. It has dropped 12 points. That is ridiculous. That is too extreme. I don't understand why. I kind of understand why, actually. But beforehand, for the evidence, we had sacrificed evidence to get lower monthly risk progress gain and a rise or a higher cap for the risk progress. Why do we not have the same thing again? I've spent all 999 political power that we've got already. But, <coughs> U.S., versus AFL-CIO. It's been months since the Attorney General has published a scathing report on the AFL-CIO's recent conduct. Incidentally, the target of the White House ire as of late. The following silence on President Goldwater's part had fueled speculation on his uncertain objectives, which had now been put to the rest by TV addressed directly from the Oval Office. His calm tone belied the energy with which he delivered the announcement that the White House had filed a case against America's largest trade union directly to the Supreme Court. The public's reaction was instantaneous, divisive, and expected. Pre Democrats proclaimed their full support, and the MPP and the progressive allies prepared their demonstrations and coalitions. American households and workplaces had an opinion of their own by the day's end. Whether the majority are in favor or against the president's latest action, pollsters such as Pew and Gallup have yet to ascertain. It's no exaggeration to suggest that the next few weeks will be heralded as a watershed precedent for American labor relations with repercussions lasting well after the Goldwater administration. The court case of the century, actually. Um, writing the party. Political stuff here. We... We have six, still conservative, so it's not even 5-4, it's 6-3, so we should be able to get it done, right? I literally went with another liberal judge, and we should still be okay. But that GDP is not too bad. Not bad. And how are we building? Just more forts? Forts are nice, yeah. I love building America up so much that you run out of space. It's a nice feeling. Actually, how much are we spending? Six billion, that's not bad. Well done, gentlemen. You need literally an extra 1,000 political power to get through this, this part of the tree. Oh, so bad, man. So bad. But poverty's still getting better. Look at that. Not bad. Unfortunately, none of these will probably go through. Obviously, last time, earlier in this episode, um, I got armed professionalism. But the modern banking system. <coughs> the Interstate Banking Act of 1975 is now on President Goldwater's desk. One of his pet projects. For years, the various states have put up barriers to the workings of financial institutions. For some banks to keep their money in their states and not transfer the money where it needs to go. Some of the smaller states are pleading for more money to invest in their economies. But the larger states jealously guard the money, seeking to keep it where it already is. But with regulation slash and taxes dropped. Soon the local region and re regional banks that were long complacent will have to compete again, which only helps small businesses and entrepreneurs to get the financing they need to get growing. Nice. Flamethrowies? Good, good, good. Um, it doesn't really matter at this point, it's 75. So, the course proceedings. As one would expect of a civil case judging the fate of a union with millions of members throughout the country. Its proceedings have been charged tense and barely civil. Violence almost erupted as soon both the plaintiff and tenant delivered their opening statements, where an attorney made offensive remarks against the union boss's character. Internal security within the courtroom had run itself ragged at keeping its participants from speaking out a line of protesters from interfering with the proceedings itself. Although arguments were kept from devolving into bloody fistfights, if only just, the entire trial simmered with a consistent level of snide and creative insults exchanged between the government and union throughout. Not that insults were all both sides could offer, of course. The justices had their fill of evidence and testimony as well, laws, prior to court decisions, compromising materials, even emotional outbursts from several witnesses. Each side did whatever they could to convince the law of the other's guilt, if not their own innocence. But there were only so many hours in a day, and everyone involved expected a speedy trial. Weeks later, America's most esteemed judges convened behind the court's closed doors to agree upon the AFL-CIO's fate. The court has decided that it's a stalemate. Now look at that. Steam rose, his face whipped. Faint wisps from the warm mug that kept Barry Goldwater company his, this Oval Office midnight, same as the last. He took a small sample of minutes old coffee, wincing at the acrid taste as he set the mug onto his plate. 
Pure Black's never easy to get used to, even after drinking nothing but it for days. But it was easy to lash out when he heard the news, lash out at his fellow Americans for not backing him up to his hilt, lashing out at the justice for letting the Union dudes get off scot-free, lashing out at God for not setting him a miracle at the end of so much effort. Hatred was strong and raw then, so very tempting to wield. Thankfully, reason quickly reasserted itself. He had his victories. The Unions had theirs. He may not have brought the whole thing down, but neither had they gotten away without a nasty limp. He still has half of America on his side and a good chunk of Congress to boot. His campaign's w wounded and bleeding, but is not yet out. Never out, if he had his way. And so it was that, his, that he addressed his cabinet later in the day, thanking them for the work they were putting in to bring the Unions down. They needed reassurances after seeing them come to naught against the AFL-CIO, no matter, he said. They're still everyone else. If not America's biggest union, then the bottom feeders nibbling at the scraps it leaves behind. Whoever got a different message shortly thereafter. And yet another of their personal conversations cl behind closed doors. I want your boys to do some work for me. War against AFL-CIO. Now, I'm not sure this is the real one that we need to get. Um, but, let me go ahead and see in the files, the game files, the mod files, if there's another event that we could get that would make us slightly more successful. Because, honestly... Like, we did really well, they had really low influence, maybe that's the one we're supposed to get, but let me double check. Alright everyone, so I went into the event files in the mod, and I think, you know, because we didn't go full radical here for the USA versus AFL-CIO, and we'd use cons commands, I think the minor victory is probably the better route. There is one that's called a major victory, there's another event called, um, or just has it that the AFL-CIO actually wins and beats Gary... Gary, Barry Goldwater, so I figured for this campaign, I think it's better if we have minor victories, not a major one, or us having a stalemate or a loss, so it is what it is, I just feel like that's probably the best thing for us right now, but minor victories. So what do we do now? Barry took a sip of his coffee as he mooled over the director's words. This time he had an extra cube of sugar, two extra spoonfuls of creamer, and milk. Sweeter than his standard fare, then again today was nothing standard either. Glancing across the table, Barry saw the director's poison lace stare bore hold at today's issues of the Washington Times. This front page started still of the Supreme Court immediately after the vote. Caption, Supreme Court votes 5-4 to cut AFL-CIO down underneath. The president felt his grin grow wider. Sure, the Union dudes got away in the end, but they also left behind a waterfall of blood as they shambled away to wherever dark crevice they come from. He took another sip of his mug, slightly bitter, just the right amount of sweet. He can live with a flavor like that. What do you mean, speed? The president inquired. We'll do what we've been doing ever since I made the Oval Office my bedroom. The court didn't do enough. Who's to say they won't get back up again? The director swigged half his coffee in one gulp before setting it aside. Well, the penalty is coming their way and the other laws besides. They'll be lucky to make it past the end of the century. Barry continued. The message got across and that's what matters. We'll come for the rest of them soon enough. We're, we've all the time in the world now. So, this one gives us back our political power that we lost every single day. Um, more stability, uh, efficiency cap, factory output. Honestly, this makes literally no sense. What do you mean 5-4? With what we did, they had low influence, I think, right? Before we did all this stuff. So, we, we, we're 6-3. Like, we're literally 6-3, so... But also, at the time of this recording, like, Barry Goldwater, he's not fully 100% bug-free. Uh, honestly, like, every route's probably not bug-free. Some are really much more bug-free than others, but, like, we're really 6-3. Six, six conservatives, three liberals, so 5-4 doesn't make any sense here. I mean, I shouldn't have needed to use cons commands to get this, but whatever. We've all the time in the world, so now do I actually have that national spirit? Because I was fumbling around with this stuff here. Okay, so they've been weakened. This is, I think, appropriate for this campaign. But we still must go on and do a modern making system. And after that, that's pretty much all the unique focuses we have for good old Barry MG. And which I'll just use consequence for this stuff, but also, this, this comment I didn't get to. So my apologies. Someone says, keep going with TNO. Let me, oh yeah, I totally will. Um, yeah. If you know me or know this channel, channel I love TNO probably too much. And I don't ever address any of the controversies that there have been in the past. And I probably won't address in the future, probably. If I do, then we have a serious problem. Uh, someone says I should play as Benat in this campaign. Probably someone said or meant Benat in... How have you guys not killed each other yet? What the heck? But plays has been at probably a thousand week Reich, but reforming our banking system. For many years, the U.S. economy has been constrained by rules and regulations that have been prevented banks and other financial institutions from being able to provide loans, credit, and services to all people and businesses across the nation. Many states, especially in the Great Plains and South, are only served by small banks and are unable to provide the services that are considered standard and normal in places like New York or California. This has prevented farmers, entrepreneurs, and ordinary people from uh, accessing resources that would allow them to expand their businesses, hire new workers, build new homes, and much more. Today, I'm asking Congress to pass the Interstate Banking Act of 1975, which removed many of the restrictions on the merging of banks, as well as reducing the regulations that are currently preventing many viable and hardworking people from getting the loans they need to buy homes, cars, businesses, and more. This new act will also cut taxes and fees that the federal government places on the banks to give them more money, which can be then borrowed by everyday Americans. <coughs> 
It has been the policy of my administration from the moment I took this esteemed office to get the government out of the way, to allow the untapped potential of our nation that has been held back for years to flourish. This act that I'm asking Congress to pass, alongside with all the other programs and actions my administration has taken, will allow our nation to grow and prosper like it's never seen before. Prosperity waits for all Americans, not just the rich, not just the middle class, but everyone. Speech from Barry Goldwater, President Barry Goldwater, to the American Chamber of Commerce. Let the money flow. Lose some efficiency, but get more construction speed, and we reform the banks. So I don't think there's anything else here. As you can see, there's a bunch of events I've executed already, so just to test things out, and then I reload save. Um, if you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Send to the troops. Honestly, like, oh, look at that. That's a really nice. So I've never seen some of these national spirits before, which makes sense, but some of these are really, really nice images. Crusade against unions, corruption, America free of fascism. And also, someone else has said in the comments, this is Keynesism? Keynes? Keynes? Keynesianism? I swear, I need to speak better. I have better pronunciations. I need to take a class and just pronouncing things better. We don't make deal with, deals with fascists. We have unbreakable unity, so... I guess we're going to get a little more involved. So, a company man, if you want to about that, please go ahead. Strangling the Saudis. Starting a fire. The sun never rises. If you want to about this, please go ahead. Just like Africa. Nice. Feeding the Flames, uh, Operation Checkmate, Subvert the Pan-Arabists, A Just War, of course, and then the Fire Rises. Yeah, get more daily army XP, that's pretty cool. But I think that's it for this campaign. A couple, a couple more comments, of course, that I did not address yet, because I do like to get through all the comments. <coughs> um, someone said that this is a Democratic Party, Barry Goldwater's TNO party that he would vote for. Cool. Uh, someone says I should play the Great War Redux 1919 scenario. Uh, and someone also recommends I do Goldwater again, go full on segregationist, do Reaganomics, and burn all the unions down. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'd love to do that. And Keynes is, or you know how to pronounce that, it's Keynes with an S. Someone says I should, oh, and also from the last video, there's apparently a discussion of fascism and socialism. So, yeah. Um, I'm not going to get involved in anything like that. So, yeah. If you guys want to comment about your interpretation and stuff, totally fine with me as long as... We don't get the channel shut down or the video shut down. Someone says I should do Romanian in TNO, which I would love to do. There's a sub mod currently out, work, well, not, not out yet, but someone, a group is working on sub mods for all sorts of different nations. So I will definitely play some eventually once I get content. And yeah, that's, that's most of the comments. But hey, if you enjoyed the video and the campaign, really, because Barry Goldwater is a lot of fun. He, he, has, he definitely has some options on how his administration will look and his presidency will look. But if you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.